When it comes to traffic, Torontonians don't have a lot of nice things to say. It sucks. <laughs> it absolutely sucks. Look at this, it's a hot mess out here. If I don't move, don't run, how I make money? And it's not just locals who are complaining about the bumper-to-bumper -bumper chaos. And I've made movies in Toronto and I've visited Toronto. What's up with the traffic in Toronto? I don't know. Have they figured this out? According to Niall Horan, apparently not. Traffic's too bad in Toronto, so I'll we'll walk into the venue. The Irish singer-songwriter took matters into his own hands when confronted with unrelenting gridlock on the way to his concert arena downtown. In all of the years playing shows, I don't think I've ever walked into a venue. According to geolocation firm TomTom, Tom, Toronto was ranked third worst in the world for having the slowest traffic in 2023. The navigation company says it took an average of 29 minutes to drive 10 kilometers. You don't have to be a professor, a civil engineer, a traffic engineer, or a rocket scientist to know this. Traffic in Toronto is horrendous. The main culprit, large construction projects, like the building of the new Ontario subway line and the repair of the Gardner Highway. This urban studies expert says Canada's most populous city needs to develop differently if any headway is to be made. We should double down our investments in our subway and people will complain it's taking too long. We should make sure that our bike lanes are well protected and people use them. And all of those things will make things better, but, but nothing's gonna do more for us than pricing the darn roads. We need to charge people to drive on the roads. It, it's called congestion pricing. This expert says charging drivers to enter the city, like in London, England, could help reduce car traffic, but she warns congestion pricing. In terms of the political will, it's really difficult to get one. In New York, they were so close. New York City's congestion pricing program was set to begin on June 30th, but the plan was scrapped just weeks before the toll was set to start for economic reasons, says the state's governor. A $15 charge may not seem like a lot to someone who has the means, but it can break the budget of a hardworking or middle-class household. Ontario says it's investing billions over the next 10 years to improve highways and public transit. The province says while we understand construction and building for the future can be disruptive, we also know that if we don't start building the infrastructure needed to support our growing population, gridlock will continue to get worse in the years ahead. We are doing a lot of renewal work in the city right now. We have a, a number of very old water mains and other transportation infrastructure and public utilities that people really need to, um, to be able to enjoy their day-to-day -day life that need to be renewed, and that uh, results in construction. We're building lots and lots of housing in the city, and that also results in construction as well as expanding our transit networks. Gray says the city has doubled the number of traffic agents to help vehicles move more quickly. Traffic lights are also being powered by artificial intelligence to adjust traffic flow. Toronto is also asking the province to green light higher fines for drivers who illegally block intersections. We're doing a lot of good work and I think that sometimes People don't necessarily always uh, think about that when they're sitting in traffic for a long time. Richard Florida says there is a positive side to congestion despite its challenges. The congestion we're experiencing represents is that people want to be here. That we are the fastest growing city in North America. And making it more livable, he says, means investing in projects and services that reduce people's reliance on cars. Idil Moussa, CBC News, Toronto.